Okay, that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, come on. Looks like we made it. And with nothing but a few scratches to show. <laughs> Think you might have overdone it? I followed the instructions to the letter. Maybe it triggered a reaction with the Mako? Well, let's hope the city's still in one piece. But the planet's what matters, right? <laughs> I mean, this must have helped some. After all that, it had better have. Anyway, let's get going. We in Sector 8? That'd be just down there. All right, then. Lead the way. You got it! Huh. <laughs> Watch out for live wires. They're everywhere! All right, we have just escaped from the first Mega Reactor explosion. Ugh. And, well, there they changed no something here. Can't they had it so the their explosion took out the reactor, or at least damaged it. But it was President Shinra that ordered the reactor be what destroyed, and the entire I've thing blew up. So Much bigger explosion than they expected. Oh, it's me. Well, it's a little bit that. different there, isn't it? The problem I see was in the original game, it was definitely intentional that the explosion was huge. In fact, Barrett bragged about the size of the explosion. And there's a reason for that. I felt that one in my guts. They just keep on coming. We need to get out of this place. Was it the Mako density? The primary explosive? The blasting agent? Hey, you can figure that out later. <sighs> I'm running on empty here. You can refuel at the base. Next time I'll have to bring a little pick-me-up. How much farther do we have to go? Not far. That's about as good a place as any. Stand back then. I'll set the bomb. Can't wait to see you, Marlene. Can't wait to take a hot shower. She's good to go. Fire in the hole! Sure told those doors. Let that be a Let's lesson to anything that gets in my way. Now this does add something. Some subplot of Jesse questioning herself over the explosion. But Attention all citizens. Attention all citizens. This is an alert from the Shinra Emergency Operations Center. Unidentified intruders have detonated a bomb inside Mako Reactor 1. Multiple explosions have been confirmed, as well as ongoing fires. In response, a disaster warning has been issued in sectors 1 and 8. Structures in the area are at high risk of collapse, rendering the entire sector hazardous. Therefore, all residents of sector No. No way. This couldn't have been us, could it? But what if it was? What's done is done. <laughs> Merck's right. It ain't pretty, but we can't stop now. This was just the first reactor, and the planet won't be safe till we get the rest. Yeah, we always knew this was gonna get messy. And this is only the beginning. Y'all gotta look at the bigger picture here. Nothing worth fighting for was ever won without sacrifice. Though you may not be crying out, I know you're in pain, just like the planet. But it's okay, cuz I'm here for you, to help take the load off your shoulders. Your fears, your worries, your concerns, and yes, your fears. 
Whatever your problem, I got you. Huh? Hmm. So, what's our next move, boss? That's easy enough. We get our asses home! Here you have a chance to see, maybe that's the reason why Barrett finds himself being the leader of this group. We'll split up and shoot for the last train home. Regroup in the freight car. Got it? Later then! Hey. I'd like my money now. You can have it once we're back at base. tell you what this is, right? Of course not. It's healing materia. You can have it, for saving my life. Just doing my job, nothing more. Yeah, yeah. Fact is, I'm lucky you were there. <laughs> Survival can be a matter of luck or skill. And you can't rely on luck. Words to live by. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. You do know how to use it, right? You do know what I was, right? In the original game, it didn't make a lot of sense to me why Barrett was the leader of Avalanche. Perhaps it was just because he was the biggest guy, or the guy with the most, um, extremist views. But he was just this sort of big brute and running around shouting all the time, so why does everybody follow him? This, it makes a little bit more sense. He comes across as a more charismatic individual. That speech he made after they escaped from the tunnel kind of gives me the impression that, like, okay, this is why people follow him. Okay, I was only trying to help. Oh, before I forget, here's a little something extra for being so brave. That really was the ride of a lifetime. Well, see you on the train. They're being much more overt here than they were in the original game about the destruction that them blowing up the reactor was. In the original game, you kind of had to go and talk to other characters, to try to get, like, listen to the TV and all that kind of stuff, to try to get the perspective of how much damage what they did caused. Now, of course, in the original game, it was, in fact, Jesse's bomb that blew up the reactor so big and so boomy. It was intentional, and Barrett bragged about the size of the explosion. The next one's going to be even bigger, he said. It wasn't, in fact, President Shinra that went and caused the explosion, probably for the sake of blaming Avalanche for it. Cloud! Up here! Look up! I said look up! Careful up here! This could collapse at any moment! If you want up, you'll have to use those stairs! Here they did two things. They're drawing much more attention to the damage caused by the explosion and how it disrupted lives and probably killed a lot of people. But they also went and made it not Avalanche's fault, which is, let's call it an interesting choice. One that I don't necessarily agree with. In fact, if it was my choice, I would still be Avalanche's fault that explosion what? happened. Why? Perhaps they felt like they needed to make a change, because they were going to show you all of this. They couldn't sort of brush it under the rug and let it be subtext for the people who are more observant or more willing to search out. But...
couldn't be. But then... Now here we have an interesting choice they made, and a somewhat unwelcome one as well, where they're showing off Sephiroth this early in the game. Now, this is... This entire game is only sort of what I consider to be a kind of first act of the game Final Fantasy VII. The original game, uh, the story continued on well after the point where this game is going to end. Now, of course, they're fleshing out a lot of stuff to make this into a much more full-fledged experience. A lot more side characters and subtext and all that kind of shit. But, of course, Sephiroth is the main antagonist of Final Fantasy VII, and, well, you're not going to see... Any, not going to see any direct evidence of him other than people talking about him in this game until the very end if they didn't have scenes like this. So they would run the risk of potentially just having the sudden arrival of Sephiroth and sudden acts of Sephiroth just sort of come out of nowhere at the end of the game if they didn't introduce his character earlier. And they couldn't just refer to him in dialogue. They have to show him, unfortunately. You're not real. You're dead. I am. Um... I killed you with my own... <gasps> oh, you need not remind me. It was the crowning moment of our time together. But that was then, and this is now. I have a favor to ask. Our beloved planet is dying. Slowly. Silently, painfully, can you bear to see the planet suffer? Cloud. Were the planet to die, so many things would be lost. Your hometown burns so bright. The sound of her voice, pleading despair, the shiver of her flesh yielding to cold steel. That which binds us together would be no more, and I would be loath to live in such a world, which is why I must ask you this one favor. Don't worry, it's a simple thing. Run, Cloud. Run away. You have to leave. You have to live. You bastard! Good, Cloud. Very good. Hold on to that hatred. I'm seeing things. Fumes from all the Mako, maybe. All right. You got this. I'm recording this commentary based on the idea that I think the person listening to this has played the original game. So I don't think I'm really spoiling anything here. And it won't be something that we really see much of in this game, assuming that all the events play out in around about the same place. So we may have to wait for the sequel to see the events of what happened in Nibelheim. But it seemed like what Cloud was going through was sort of a flashback and sort of a kind of effort for Sephiroth to control him. Now in the original game, Sephiroth did have a degree of control over Cloud. He could actually just completely take over his body at times and force him to do things. And that resulted in Cloud doing quite a number of rather terrible things. I mean, he, um, he beats up Aerith at one point and then he goes and gives Sephiroth a black materia at the end of, or uh, midpoint of disc two. So it seems like, oh shit, he can go and do all sorts of stuff. And I guess the characters being much more expressive and the having voiced, uh, voice dialogue and all that kind of stuff, more cinematic camera angles, all that kind of stuff, it's going to make it where you can't just have Cloud lean back a little bit, 
reach for his head. You hear this loud sound and the screen flashes and then you know something weird is happening with Cloud. He's being controlled or something like that. So they got to show a much, you know, a control over Cloud, but in a little bit less of an overt way. Making him do things by showing him things. You are too weak to save anyone. Not even yourself. Are you okay? Hey, are you okay? I'm fine. Here, this is for you. Huh? A flower? That's right. It's a gift. You know, for scaring those things away. What things? Never mind. Think of it as a memento. Just my luck. I heard that, you know. How much? Well, that depends on the customer. In your case... <laughs> it's on the house. Huh? Lovers used to give these when they were reunited. Look, I'm involved in things. Dangerous things. Oh, I'm sure you are. So? So keep your distance. Wait, you think someone's out to get you? Is that what you're all worked up about? Relax. No one's going to attack you. I promise. Hey, a Mako reactor just blew. You shouldn't be out here trying to self- <gasps> This is kind of coming a little bit out of nowhere. This weird ghost things that are attacking Eris. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. That is new for this game. And, well, I was kind of going into this expecting them to be introducing a lot of new things into this game. Because, well, this is really... This entire game is really only going to be taking place over what a reasonable pace of a person playing the game is like seven or eight hours and if you know how to get through it, maybe like two or three hours or something of the original Final Fantasy VII. So how do you stretch three hours of gameplay into 40 hours that this game is supposed to be? Well, you have to add a lot of stuff. And it's not just side quests and it's not just a larger environment that Cloud's running around in. Because really this whole thing that we're looking at here, Cloud running through the streets, fighting the guards, running into Eris and all that kind of stuff really only took like uh, at most like two or three minutes and here it's gonna take like I don't know 45 minutes or so so they're clearly dumping a lot of stuff in. now it's not all just a big long dungeon crawl that you have to get from one side of the city to the other to get to the train station they gotta add a little bit more into that it would feel rather shallow if they just had the vanilla experience as far as story goes, but a whole lot of modern gameplay and dungeons and all that kind of stuff. If you need 
Calling it a dungeon even though it's a city. You know what I mean, I assume. So what they had to do is they had to add in a lot more story. Now we haven't seen a whole hell of a lot so far. I mean the reactor stuff more or less went the way it did in the original game. Characters jump off the train, they go in, they attack the place, they defeat guards, Barrett and Cloud have an argument, uh, all that kind of stuff, except for the uh, bomb not actually blowing up the whole damn place. It more or less followed the, the same storyline progression that the original game did. Now we're starting to see a greater divergence from the original game, this whole weird ghost shit going on around Eric. And, well, I'm going to have to see how it plays out. Because although I have gone deeper into the game than what we're looking at right here, I haven't gotten deep enough to know what the hell it was any of that, <laughs> any of that ghost crap was. Use your magic. Something that they are doing here, though, that I'm very much appreciative of when it comes to changing. Uh, I can't, I can't do that. There's no other character. <laughs> Something that they're doing here that I very much appreciate compared to the original game is they seem to have scaled everything up bigger. Now Midgar is the... Mostly you've seen it through that first full motion video, pre-rendered video in the intro to the original game was it starts on Earth looking at that light and she walks out on the street and the camera pans away. And you see the city of Midgar was so doubt. impressive and all that kind of stuff back in 1997. But then you think about it and go, wait a sec, that city is... It's supposed to be this big technological wonder and all that kind of stuff. But the city's scale was way off. It's way too small. It doesn't feel large enough to be a kind of functional, functional city. So this game, though, has done quite a bit to make the entire place feel much bigger. Cloud is running street to street, running through alleys, coming out on other streets, crawling over buildings, coming out on other streets. This city feels much more realistic. Now, I doubt we're ever going to be set loose in it. The storyline progression won't allow for that. And this isn't really supposed to be an open world game. But the city feels much bigger here. I mean, there was a fountain in the original game, but it was a small area you ran to on the other side in a few seconds. So, the city was just too small. The city feels bigger here. Still not quite realistic in size, but much better. And this is really even only Sector, uh, where are we, Sector 7 right now? I'm not sure. I don't know what sector we're in. I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, this is just a part of it. And once we get beneath the plate, and you can and you can look up and sort of get a perspective of the scale of the place, it feels much more impressive. Unfortunately, I do think that some of these sections do take a little bit long. Like this section here. It's sort of like... I guess you're going to consider this to be the boss battle of this particular dungeon. And not that there's a big enemy that comes out and just starts fucking you up. It's a bunch of the regular enemies, and they're just swarming you. Of course, Cloud is going to be a little bit stronger than he was before. He's gained some levels, or he's gained a level, perhaps. He got that new materia. You're probably better at playing the game, so they can throw things at you that they wouldn't have done before when Cloud was alone. And I'm not opposed to boss battle design levels. It doesn't always need to be some big monster that goes in there and then all your characters have to focus damage on or anything like that. Sometimes it is refreshing to see a little bit of a different change where you have a bunch of regular enemies swarming you. But unfortunately I feel like this does last too long. I'm also not quite sure how I feel about this. And this is kind of nitpicking at this point. But the design of the automobiles in this game. Now, a lot of the ones that I've seen so far give off the appearance of just sort of being older than older vehicles. Like something out of the 50s. 50s era's car. 50 era's car. 50s era cars. 
they all just look old fashioned. Now the vehicles in, uh, well, I mean, you can't really get a good look at it because the camera's panning around too much. But the vehicles in the original game, I guess they kind of had a bit of an old fashioned feel to them, but they weren't anything that you would really confuse for a real car or a truck or anything like that. They're all just sort of weird, bonkers design. Oh, this has three wheels and is blue. All sorts of weird designs. I guess they do feel the need that they need to kind of ground this game a little bit. Because although there is a pretty big audience of people who were uh, players of the original game who would turn around and buy this, they do have to kind of change things around a bit to try to appeal more towards your mainstream gaming audience. Because, strangely enough to say it is now, Final Fantasy VII is no longer something which I would consider to be a mainstream game, considering it's not the kind of thing that, like, the Call of Duty crowd would want to play. Hence why they turned this into more of an action game than the turn-based, more strategic gameplay of the original. That being said, they also have to change other things to make it make a little bit more sense to a potential player, so instead of having bonkers-ass cars everywhere, you have something that looks more realistic. We have a city that seems a little bit more realistic, even though it's like built on a plate hovering over a uh, slum. Or in, and they have these weird power reactors that are sucking souls out of the dirt. None of that makes sense, of course. But you can make little changes here. Like, look at that truck. That truck looks very normal. You make little changes like that, which give every, give the world a bit more of a recognizable feel. Instead of being this kind of weird uh, cyber or techno-punk fantasy world that the original game is. Not bad. Honestly, still at this point, I'm not entirely sure if if you need to run over items of enemies that you defeated to pick them up. I don't know. I don't think so, but it seems like sometimes I don't get the items if I don't run into them. Still early enough in the game that a lot of the enemies can be easily defeated by the four attacks, and you just sort of toss them into the air and they're dead. I know that the game, the game does get harder later on. Now, I'm playing it on normal right now. So look at that. Four or five attacks, whatever that was. Last one tosses the dude in the air. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I mean, how many times am I going to see that? I don't know much about architecture, but they gave the... Well, the... I'm going to have to look up photos of what buildings and all that kind of stuff up on the plate look like in the original game. Because I'd like to compare the kind of designs of the buildings in the original game to this. Now, I don't know much about architecture or anything like that, so I don't know what the terminology for this kind of building design is. But I see, like, a combination of cobblestone roads with, uh, this, I guess, would be asphalt here. Which gives a kind of another old-fashioned look. I don't think the city itself is supposed to be really that old. Look at that weird ass. That's a kind of weird ass buggy. <laughs> Where the hell was I going? So yeah, a lot of like cafes. This place almost feels like it could be real. Almost. Which, uh, if it did feel like, if it did resemble a real city too strongly, it would be boring. No one wants to see reality. Even if people think they want to see reality, they don't. And the closest thing you get to reality in a lot of these games is something like the city and, say, the Grand Theft Auto games. Grand Theft Auto games feel real until you pay more attention to it and you realize it's kind of psycho and bonkers all the time. They did give the combat a little bit more of the kind of Advent Children style action that we saw in that movie with Cloud hopping around in a spinny ship. I know they attempted to make the action of the, fight, of the fights and the combat much more dynamic back in 13. 
13, they made that weird, I forget what the battle system was called, but he didn't take direct control of the characters, and like lightning is doing her attacks, and then she jumps away, and then shoots the enemy, and she hopping away. But it didn't come across as anything really like what Advent Children was supposed to be representing. So they kind of failed in that regard. And also, people were put off by the fact that you neither had direct control in a real-time sense over your characters, and it was a little bit... Uh, and the combat was a little bit shallow. You didn't have much in the way of a tactical control of fights. Here, I think they actually managed to pull something off. I mean, this is the closest to that kind of hyper-stylized action that we saw in Advent Hill Children. Better than what 13 managed to pull off. And they managed to pull it off in a game with real-time combat. Sort of like uh, Devil May Cry-esque, because you're doing a lot of attacks and then dodge and attack and dodge and all that kind of stuff. But different enough to not feel like that. End of the life, Pug! I'm gonna enjoy this! Of course, we have another sort of mini-boss encounter. There's actually a sort of a boss-ish character here. And I feel a little bit disappointed that this isn't somebody that we saw, like, sort of walk onto the scene and make their presence felt before the fight. Like, I'm not uh, hilarious. I forget what he's called. But you have a more powerful trooper in this area. Somewhere around here. Right, that's not it. Right, right trooper, that's not it. Around here somewhere. It's more difficult to defeat and all that kind of stuff. And they got the other enemies attacking you and all that kind of stuff. But really, uh, even though they gave a relatively subdued boss here, along with the swarm of enemies... Oh, there he is back there with the red shield. They, I think, like, this kind of thing is a pretty good idea, pretty good idea here, too. Unfortunately, by this point, I had spent so much time running through the streets of Midgar, dungeon stretching on a little bit too long. The game hasn't really given me a chance to rest up yet, go into a town, and visit stores, and all that kind of stuff. So, it's stretching on a little bit too long. Ideally, you want to go and give your player, not just your characters, but your players, a little bit of time to rest from the action of Ragnar. Give them a minute to sort of collect their thoughts and to not be mashing the buttons all over the damn place. That is where I think 13 actually sort of went wrong. Because there weren't traditional towns, there weren't these moments where the player could stop, could rest a little bit. There was always, you ran from one dungeon to another, just a long, narrow path, one end of the game to the other. Unless we're talking about, like, once you got down the pulse. And that's probably why... One of the reasons, at least, why people had a bit more of a negative reaction to that game than their predecessors. Because not only did it sort of not feel like Final Fantasy, whatever that was supposed to be, it was also a little bit exhausting. And there's only so much time that you can spend doing that kind of thing, moving from one thing to another, before it starts to just bore you. As impressive and as some people may think, you want to see, say, an action movie where 10 minutes in, something starts happening, and then for the next 90 minutes or so, you've got John McClane or somebody running around just blowing shit up left and right. That kind of thing, it, it will get boring, and it will wear the viewer or reader or player and that was the mistake that the biggest mistake I feel that 13 and it's a mistake that they don't fall into with this game because I have gotten far enough to know that you do run into a town and you do get a chance to calm down and all that kind of stuff but I feel like they're making a miniature version of that mistake here 
but this dungeon is just too damn long. And it came hot on the heels of the previous dungeon in the Mako Reactor. So, I mean, it did calm down a little bit as you were walking through the streets, and there's nothing attacking you or anything like that. But it still kind of feels like you're in a in the first dungeon. Yeah. Sector 8 Unit 2. Target is surrounded. Moving to secure. Wait! I know them. Up to, huh? 